like money, motherfucker? Money be green. Money feel like money. That shit look green to you? I'm hoping to make some green this weekend, Brian, because these are some fights that you could probably build a parlay in, but also bet separately. Let's start off with Gerard Ennis and Romain Villa. Gerard Ennis, a minus 1,300 favorite, say, straight up on the money line. And then you got Villa, who is a plus 720. Brian, obviously, people are favoring Gerard Boots Ennis in this one by a lot, but how do you see this one going, and how are you going to be betting? Slightly disrespectful to Romain Villa, by the way. <laughs> but uh, because I think now how we got here is important. They both fought on the January, I forget if it's 6th or 7th, I believe it was 7th, card of uh, Gervonta Davis versus Hector Luis Garcia. Uh, Boots Ennis was the co-feature. He fought uh, Karen from the Ukraine. Chukadazan, I think is how you pronounce his last name. I don't remember. Chukazan. Chukazan. Whatever it is. But regardless, he it, it doesn't matter because he lost the fight. And I don't know if we're going to see him again anytime soon. Uh, he did win since. I just checked this out uh, in Germany. He got a second round stoppage. And also on that card, Romain Villa upset over Speedy Rashidi Ellis, who was undefeated. And Romain Villa went into that fight, um, was kind of getting outboxed, but kept himself in. The pressure was starting to break down Rashidi Ellis. And then two knockdowns in the 12th round. And won a majority decision, 114-112, two cards. Uh, had it and then the other had it a 113-113 draw so this was only natural that we get to this fight next both highly ranked welterweights and Jerron Boots Ennis has a title has, a, has an IBF interim title so perhaps lurking in the shadows of Errol Spence and or Terrence Crawford whoever wins that fight but we'll see but Boots Ennis is the favorite for good reason he's just better and I think even though he struggled in his last fight, he did get to showcase some of his boxing ability, won every round because his opponent, uh, who had amazing footwork and some good defense and head movement, didn't really engage, was just kind of in there to survive. And I think showed a different element of uh, what Boost and its can do in terms of trying to cut off the ring and chase him around and land at one, two. It wasn't a spectacular performance. And it was the first time he fought past six rounds, but it was good work for him that I think will pay off in the long run. Now, Romain Villa is not going to do any of that shit because Romain Villa is going to be in his face. <laughs> and I kind of think that's why this fight is uh, being set up here is not so Boots Ennis can just get a knockout, but to put him in a more stylistically entertaining fight. I think uh, Villa may have a couple of moments, but I think Boots Ennis is going to get the stoppage and go back on another knockout streak. He had a 19 fight knockout streak uh, disregarding a no contest uh, leading up to his last fight. Boots Ennis, interestingly enough, the books think that this is going to be done between um, probably like that four, five, six range, the over under six and a half. And you get minus odds now at Boots Ennis to win between rounds one and six. I have Jerome Boots Ennis winning by KO, TKO, between rounds seven through 12, which as of this recording, plus 195, because I think Via, who's never been stopped, and I don't even know if he's been dropped before. It, you know, he has a Via has a great chin. Yeah, he's going to be taking some shots, but I think he's going to take them well. I think Boots and it's because of Via's pressure is going to box more, has a three inch height advantage, has a four inch reach advantage. And I think he's going to use his length, use his jab, use that one two to sort of keep Via at distance. I think he'll catch him for sure, but I think it's going to be in the second half of the fight, not in the first six rounds. I'm going to give Via that. And I also just like this number at almost plus 200 odds, and it may go to plus 200 by the time the fight starts. So Jerome Boots Ennis to win by stoppage, plus 195 between rounds 7 through 12 odds, courtesy of, for that bet, FanDuel. Yeah, I really hate when we have the exact same bet because I'm like, <laughs> how, how am I going to break this down now? But uh, you talked about Jerron Ennis, and I think he is like lurking in the shadows to be you know, the next king of this division. Also Virgil Ortiz, who we're going to get to in a, a little bit. But I think he has a lot to prove coming into this fight because, like you mentioned, kind of an underwhelming performance against Chukazan. And that was a fight where I think a lot of people thought he would just go and get the knockout, like how he usually does, or the stoppage. And it, that just didn't happen. But we saw him box. And I think for a lot of people, they were kind of expecting him to just knock him out, like I said. So now there's questions about Jerron Ennis. 
And it's crazy because he still dominated every round. Like he won so by quickly. unanimous decision. So now there's these questions like, can Jerron Ennis really be that guy? So I think he's coming into this one more motivated than ever and probably has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because people are now saying that he's not that guy. After for so long, everyone's like, he's going to be that guy. So despite the fact that he bodied Chukazan in every round, and maybe we gave Chukas on one round, maybe two if you want to be gener generous, but not really. Yeah. Like, let's just be real here. Like, yeah. dropped it, <laughs> dominated. Um, won by unanimous decision, but now there's these questions. And you think about Jerron Ed Edis in this fight. Like, he has to establish the jab early on. He has a really good jab. He has power in both of his hands. Can knock you out in different ways. And he can box on the inside, mid mid range, outside. Like, he does it all. He has all the attributes. And when you think about this division in the welterweight division, I think he's the most talented. When you actually take a look at that checklist, he's the most talented guy in this division. And he has real power. So I think he's going to show it off in this fight. But Romain Villa, this is a guy that only has one loss on his record, right? And he has the knockout power. I think he has an 88% knockout ratio or something like that. So you know that he's knocking out dudes, has power in his hands, and he's coming off, um, you know, that win against Rashidi Ellis in a fight where a lot of people were surprised at how Romain Villa won that fight. Because nobody thought he was going to win. People thought it was going to be Rashidi Ellis, and then we would see Jerron Ennis and Rashidi Ellis fight. I bet on him. I bet on Villa to win that fight. <laughs> Well, good for you, because I thought Rashidi Ellis, because he was talking all that smack, that because him and Gerard Ennis were supposed to fight after, right? Like, that kind of what people were thinking was going to happen. Um, but you just take a look at how Romain Villa fights, and I think he's extremely underrated, especially when you think about the fact that he is a pressure fighter, likes to come forward, and he knows how to cut off the ring. So how is Gerard Ennis going to be able to handle all this? I think Gerard Ennis learned a lot from his last fight. He's going to be able to box Romain Villa from a distance and if he has to bang on the inside he'll bang on the inside because that's what Jerron Ennis can do Romain Villa is going to try to be the pressure fighter in this one but I think all Jerron Ennis actually really has to do in this fight is just land the jab just establish the jab keep throwing the jab and then he's going to catch Romain Villa at one point I also have Jerron Ennis winning round seven through 12 by stoppage plus 195 there but I do actually see this possibly happening um, maybe round nine or 10. Um, mm -hmm. I want to take a look at the odds over there because I think that's kind of an interesting place where you just want to have a different bet than me. It's fine. Yeah. And plus the odds are really good. Jerron Ennis to win rounds nine through 10 plus eight fifty. So a little bit of extra value if you do, because I actually think Romain Villa is going to last in the ring for quite some time. Um, because even in that loss, uh, that he has on his record, which I believe was against this Mexican like journeyman, um, yeah, lost by split decision in that one. It was a really, really close fight. It was a uh, Marcus uh, via Santa, and that was a fight he could have won. It was by split decision, so he's not a guy that's getting like knocked out or dropped, like you know what I mean. Yeah. He has a lot of potential in this fight to have some big moments. Um, so I'm interested in seeing how Jerron Ennis handles it because he can't have another underwhelming performance but meaning he's gonna win every round and not get the knockout like he can't have that you know what i mean um so yeah that's kind of my thoughts on this fight i think jerron ennis uh by decision i gave it a look it was like plus 500 just because v look v is tough has a chin good value there I, you know what i mean and Chantel's no longer going to tell me not to sprinkle on a decision if I don't, if I want to because she learned her lesson from the Canelo Alvarez fight. <laughs> that was crazy. Did you did you actually think he was going to get the decision in that fight? I sprinkled on it. <laughs> you sprinkled on it, but I mean, you can sprinkle on random stuff. No, because you know I mean? the whole thing with John Ryder is he hadn't been stopped before that except for an early stoppage, and he had six I just losses. Didn't think, so I just like... didn't think it could happen against Canelo. And it was, and it was, it's like, it was, it's it John was... Ryder. I, I, you know, these European level fighters. I was like, come on. <laughs> Stop the writer's good. He was a contender. And look, here's the thing. It was a tiny ring. Canelo Alvarez should have knocked him out, which is why I don't think he's going to knock out Jamel Charlo. But anyway, um, I think Ennis gets to stop his late-ish in this fight. I think it's more of a boxing performance, as you said. As long as he establishes a jab, he's fine, and I think he'll do that. Use the height. Use the reach. Use the skill, because obviously he's the more skilled fighter here. Um, Via kind of has one or two things that he can really do really well pressure and just getting on the inside and i think he's going to try to hammer boots ennis's body which he should jerron ennis has to be careful not to leave his body open there but as long as he establishes his jab he could win the fight with his one two he can 
land lead left uppercuts later on if he feels like it, which he can do so well. I think we'll see that at some point, but I don't think it needs to be a, a, an overly complex performance. Just get the job done, get the stoppage late, and move on to hopefully a super fight after this. <laughs> yeah.